Good evening, everyone, and welcome to tonight's Rethink Education family webinar. We are so excited to have you here. This is our fifth webinar in our series, and we have five more to go, so we hope that you'll show back up for our other ones, but tonight's is really special. We're going to talk about creating good digital citizens, a super important topic for parents right now, and I'm so excited to have two really special members of the Rethink Education staff. Kevin Ward and Iris Ellington are with us this evening, and I'm going to turn things over to them so that they can get started on this awesome presentation. Enjoy. Good evening, everyone. My name is Kevin Ward, and I'm the Rethink Education Professional Development Coordinator for the Sand Hills region. Like Amber said, we have the pleasure of having Miss Iris Ellington joining us. She is the Rethink Education Professional Development Coordinator for the Southeast region. She's here to monitor the chat, provide assistance, and answer any questions you may have as we go through the presentation. Let's take a look at what we will go over this evening. First, we will take time to go over a few webinar basics and meeting etiquette. Then we will discuss the meaning of digital citizenship. Next, we will talk about tips to help you at home create good digital citizens. We will then discuss need to know applications for parents and safety measures implemented in the school setting. Then we will close up our session and provide time for questions if needed. Let's go over our meeting norms. These are the expectations we have in order to make this a successful session. Be present and actively engaged in activities and discussions. Be respectful of others. Place questions in the chat box, remain muted during the presentation, start and end on time. We are using the Zoom platform for our sessions. I want to make sure that you can locate the chat bar. Since this is how you can participate in tonight's session, please look for the chat icon at the bottom of your Zoom screen. This is how you can enter questions or comments during tonight's session. You can leave the to field at everyone if you would like to make your comments and answers to questions visible to everyone. If you would like to ask a question and don't want to include everyone, please select Iris Ellington or Amber Garvey from the drop down menu. At times, you may be asked to respond with a reaction symbol. To accept, access reactions, click on the reactions button at the bottom of your screen and choose your desired reaction. That is going to be very important for tonight's session. Now that we have a better understanding of the chat and reactions features in Zoom, let's get started. What is digital citizenship? If you're like me, I often heard this phrase and was not completely sure of its meaning. Let's take a look at the definition of digital citizenship. Digital citizenship refers to the responsible use of technology by anyone who uses computers, the internet, and digital devices to engage with society on any level. Please take a moment to reflect on the ways your child engages with society on technology and type those into the chat box. I will give you guys a few moments for this reflection activity. So I'm seeing gaming, social media for homework. Awesome responses. The Internet is a wonderful place for learning and entertainment, just like you guys um, highlighted. But like the world around us, it can pose dangers if precautions are not taken. Allowing free access puts your child, devices and personal data at risk. We will now take a look at 10 tips to empower your digital citizens at home. Remain positively engaged. Pay close attention to and know the online environments your children use. Surf the web with them. Appreciate your children's participation in their online communities and show interest in their friends. Try to react constructively when they encounter, encounter inappropriate material. As we say in the business, make it a teachable moment. I am no TikToker, but I have created an environment where my children enjoy showing me a funny TikTok they have found. I do not think their humor will ever compete with my dad jokes, but I do encourage their efforts. Support their good choices. 
expand your children's online experience and their autonomy when developmentally appropriate. As they demonstrate competence in safe and secure online behavior and good decision making. Keep a clean device. Safety and security start with protecting all family computers with a security suite like an antivirus, anti spyware or firewall settings. That is set up to update automatically and backing up computer files on a regular basis. Keep your operating system, web browsers, and other software current on all devices. Most of the time, I dread those lengthy Apple updates to just change some silly emojis, but I want to ensure that my di device is protected and functioning at its highest possible level. Know the protection features. All major internet service providers have tools to help you manage young children's online experience. For example, selecting approved websites, monitoring the amount of time they spend online, or limiting the people who can contact them. And may have other security features as well, such as pop-up blockers. Third-party tools are also available, but remember that your home isn't the only place they can go online. Review privacy settings. Look at the privacy settings available on social networking sites, smartphones, apps, and other social tools your children use. Decide together which settings provide the appropriate amount of protection for each child. I know I keep my personal Facebook settings pretty strict to keep from being messaged by solicitors. Who knows how those extended vehicle warranty folks will contact me next. Teach critical thinking. Help your children identify safe, credible websites and other digital content and be cautious about clicking on, downloading, posting and uploading content. With three teenagers at home, I know your struggle. Deciding whether the dishwasher is clean or dirty, you would think they were literally doing algebra. Explain the implications. Help your children understand the public nature of the internet and its risks and benefits. Be sure they know that any digital info they share, such as emails, photos, or videos, can easily be copied and pasted elsewhere and is almost impossible to take back. Things that could damage their reputation, friendships, or future prospects should not be shared electronically. Saying no rarely works. Teach your children how to interact safely with people they meet online. Though it's preferable they make no in-person contact with online-only acquaintances, young people might not always follow this rule. So talk about maximizing safe conditions, meeting only in well-lit public places, always taking at least one friend and telling a trusted adult about any plans they make, including time, place, and acquaintances contact information. Remind them to limit sharing personal information with new friends. These are also great skills to promote as our young ones move into adulthood, interact with new people. I want my children to have effective and safe ways of interacting with others because once they move out, I want my nest to stay empty. See you guys on the holidays. Support handling issues. Your children may deal with situations like bullying, unwanted contact, or hurtful comments online. Work with them on strategies for when problems arise, such as talking with a trusted adult, not retaliating, calmly talking with the person, blocking the per person if needed, or filing a complaint. Agree on the steps to take if the strategy fails. Finally, promote digital leadership. Help ensure they master the safety and security techniques of all technology they use. Support their positive and safe engagement in online communities. Encourage them to help others accomplish their goals. Urge them to help if friends are making poor choices or being harmed. Remind your children to be good digital leaders by respecting personal information of friends and family and not to share anything about others that is potentially embarrassing or hurtful. I truly appreciate my kids saving the world from my TikTok dances. That would be extremely hurtful to your eyes. Even though digital citizenship is about way more than just online safety, I wanted to take a few moments this evening to review several need-to-know digital applications 
also known as apps for short. Since my kids tell me that Facebook is for old people, I feel it is important we take time to update ourselves on some of the new trends. Be aware this is not a comprehensive list of available apps. Based on research and trends, I wanted to make sure every parent was aware of these particular apps. For each app slide, I want you to utilize those reactions at the bottom of your Zoom screen. If you recognize all the apps on the screen, you're going to select that heart emoji for me. If you recognize most of the apps, you're going to select that thumbs up emoji. And if you do not recognize any of the apps, select the surprise face with open mouth emoji. So let's get started. We will start with the most commonly used apps. We will leave Facebook off the list since it's for old people. Take a few moments and see if you recognize these apps. Use your reactions to let me know how many, if any, apps you recognize. Thank you guys so much for participating. So real quick, I'm gonna go from the top to bottom um, and identify each app and give you some information about those apps. So the first app we have at the very top is Instagram. It's photo sharing, video sharing, and social networking service. For safety reasons, geolocation services and privacy settings should be adjusted to avoid risk to users. Content can be inappropriate for certain age group. When we talk about geolocation, we're talking about, about being able to identify the location of where that device is. It could be specific to a town, a zip code, or it could actually give a coordinate to an exact address for where that device is. Snapchat is our next one, the little yellow one. Messaging app that allows users to exchange user-generated photos, text, videos, and calls, both audio and video. Snaps are often thought as self-destructing by disappearing after a few sec seconds. This thought of disappearing content leads some users to send inappropriate content. Parents should also know there are location services with this app to allow the user to share their location with other users. The next one down, we have TikTok, an app that allows users to create and share their own videos while they lip sync, dance, or just talk. Content can be inappropriate for certain age groups. This app has been rated as the most used by people under the age of 18 for both 2020 and 2021. As you all have probably heard from recent news stories, the influence of TikTok is very powerful within our schools. Last but not least, we have YouTube, a video sharing platform that allows users to view, post, and share videos. Content can be inappropriate also, for certain age groups. On to our next one. So guys, take a couple of minutes here, a couple of moments, and see if you recognize all of these, most of these, or none of these. These are some of the most popular messaging apps. Awesome. Thank you guys so much for participating in the chat box. So we're going to start at the top again and work our way down. The one at the very top, the green one with the phone, that's called WhatsApp. It's a private messaging app that allows users to send text, photos, and videos, and also location information to their contacts. This is an alternate to texting where contact details will not appear on your monthly cell phone statement and users can connect worldwide with other users. The next one down we have Kick, another private, in, uh, private instant messenger and video app for mobile devices that uses a smartphone's data plan or Wi-Fi to transmit and receive messages, photos, videos, and other content. The app has been criticized as unsafe for minors due to its um, autonomy features and alleged weak parental control mechanisms, reported involvement in several incidents of child exploitation and accessibility to pornography. Next one down, we have Facebook Messenger. Even though Facebook is for old people, this messenger needed to make the list. This service allows photo and video exchange as well as phone calls and video calls. 
It also has location settings based on capabilities, which can lead to safety issues if not turned off. Many apps work with this messenger, not just Facebook, and you can also do in-app purchases as well. All right, last but not least, this app at the bottom is called Discord. This app I learned about the hard way last year. Discord is an anonymous chat platform that was originally used for chatting between gamers. There is often harassment and bullying on this site. Last year, we had a student utilize this app to communicate with friends to launch a swatting of our school. If you do not know, swatting is where there's a prank call to emergency services in an attempt to bring about the dispatch of a large number of armed police officers. For example, there's a weapon in the school, somebody's going to shoot someone at school, making a, a, fake, a fake call to bring in these armed police officers. Even deleted, this student's Discord messages were access to utilize in prosecution. All right, we will now review some dating apps. Even though our children should not be using any of these apps, many kids are creating fake accounts to gain attention and make connections with other people. We all know this is super dangerous. So I wanted to put a name to many of the apps' faces. Take a few moments and see if you recognize any of these apps and place that emoji in the chat. All right, thank you guys so much for participating. I'm not gonna go into detail about each dating app. I will reveal their names in order like we would read a book. So we'll start at the top left and end at the bottom right. So at the very top left, we have Timber, Tinder. To its right, we have Bumble. Onto the next row, we have Grinder. To its right, we have Scout. The next row, we have Plenty of Fish. To its right, we have Badu. Onto the last row, we have Meet Me, and then finally to its right is OkCupid. Okay All of these apps have geolocation services and can put your child in danger. We will now review some other messaging apps. Take a few moments to see if you recognize any of these and place your emoji reaction in the chat box. All right, thank you guys so much for participating. So we're gonna reveal these from top to bottom. The very first one, as you probably can tell by the app's picture, it's Ask FM. It's a social networking site that allows users to ask other people questions, often anonymously. This app is known for cyberbullying. I know as a parent, if I saw this app and didn't know what it was, it kind of looks like a radio app, right? Maybe it's the new Spotify, I'm not sure. I see FM and I'm going old school with the radio. The next one down is Hot or Not, encourages users to rate your profile, check out people in their area, and chat with strangers. The goal of this app is to meet up. Next one down, we have Live Me. This is a live streaming video app that uses geolocation to share videos so users can find out a broadcaster's exact location. Users can earn coins as a way to pay for photos. The next one down, we have Whisper. This app is an anonymous social network that promotes sharing secrets with strangers. It also reveals a lo user's location so people can meet up. And last but not least, we have Ola. This is basically an app version of Chat Roulette, if you're familiar with that, which allows users to instantly connect via webcam and video chat from people all around the world. Reviewers say they have been confronted with racial slurs, explicit content, and more. Finally, we will end on a shocking app that is only one of many of its kind. Looks like a basic calculator app, right? Wrong. This app is called Calculator Percent. Literally, calculator spelled out with a percent sign at the end. It is a secret app used to hide photos, videos, files, and even browser history. Once opened, it appears to be a normal calculator app, 
But once the user enters their PIN number using the calculator numbers, their secret vault is opened. Again, this is just one example of all the incognito apps on the market. I want to take a moment now to apologize to all the children out there that have permanently lost their phones until the age of 36. But this was not my intent, intention to be a scare tactic. I want you to be part of your child's digital citizenship journey. Be active, be educated, and be aware of what is out there. Knowledge will help you keep your children safe while being productive citizens in our digital society. Now, I want to take a moment to review protections in place in the school setting to understand the acceptable use policies and what tools may be in place to protect your children. So knowledge. You may not be aware, but North Carolina public schools have implemented the NC Standard Course of Study for Digital Learning Grades K-12. through These standards are designed to be delivered by classroom teachers in all curricular areas and grade levels, providing students the equitable opportunity to learn in a digitally enabled classroom. These standards encompass digital citizenship, data privacy, and cyber safety, as well as digital age skills that enable students to be college and career ready. Next, school setting protections. Schools often create certain protocols to help protect students from harmful online content. Just one example, cell phones are a major distractor in the classroom. But is having an unmonitored online access by a student during school a worse scenario? Having students either place them in the front of the room, in their locker, and et cetera, isn't a way that the teachers be, being super strict or mean. It is a distractor, but we want to also limit their chance to access harmful content while we are not there to ab able to track or monitor their access. Schools utilize certain security tools to monitor and track student access on school devices. These tools can filter out adult or unsafe content, block certain website access, monitor and if needed, lock live student navigation, and even report potentially harm content um, that has been searched for on the device. For example, searching for ways to commit self-harm or violence towards others. Just to name a few of the common tools used by districts, we have Securely, Gaggle, and Impero. Any of my educator friends out there tonight, feel free to flood, flood the uh, chat box with other known security tools utilized by districts while I move on to acceptable use policies. You know that giant stack of papers brought home to you by your child the first week of school every year? I know you felt like you were buying a house with all that signing, but you were actually acknowledging your understanding of many classrooms, school, and or district policies and procedures. One of these documents is normally an acceptable use policy. An acceptable use policy is an important document which governor, governs students' use of the internet at school and covers a wide range of issues surrounding the rights, responsibilities, and privileges, as well as the sanctions connected with computer use. As new technologies become more important in the lives of schools, acceptable use policies were developed primarily to promote safe and responsible use of the internet and devices for all school stakeholders. Now we want to take the time to provide you with some resources from Rethink Education. I've created a family resource list for creating good digital citizens. This resource list is not a comprehensive list of family resources, but rather a starting point. Iris is posting the link to this family um, resource list in the chat. You can also see the link uh, in the box at the bottom of the slide. Please feel free to share this link with anyone you know that could benefit from this information. I do want to take a moment and show you what this document looks like. So when you navigate to the link, this is what it will look like. There's a section for parents, and then also a section for children. And this is just a starting point. This isn't an end all be all. These are some various resources to help you dig deeper and educate yourself. And then there's also some resources to help engage your um, child at home to learn 
how to be great digital citizens in fun and creative ways. Again, please sharing is caring. Feel free to share that with anybody. I would love to share that resource out. If you find a great resource and you're like, wow, this should be added to the list, add it. Send us an email. We'd love we'd love to com combine all your efforts together for the good of creating great digital citizens at home. Iris will now put a link to this presentation in the chat so that you can have a copy for your information, links, and additional resources. You can also see the link in the box of the bottom of this slide. Once you access this presentation on slide 19, there's some additional links as you see in this presentation. At the first link, you will find the calendar for our upcoming webinars. Some of the topics are already selected, and some of the topics will be driven by feedback from these sessions. We want to provide informative and relevant information that our NC families need. Please consider registering for other webinars. The second link is the family support page on our website. On this page, you will find publications specific for supporting your children at home with learning. At the bottom of this web page is an exciting resource that is continually growing. As part of Rethink Education, we will be creating content for students in grades kindergarten through eighth grade. Along with the content, our designers are developing support guides for parents and guardians to help you with your child with content in the areas of math, English language arts, science, and social studies. The development of these resources is ongoing and we will provide links to them as they are completed. <clears throat> we really appreciate you attending this evening's webinar. We would like to know how helpful this session was for you. Iris will be posting the link to the survey in the chat box. Please complete this short feedback form for us so that we can ensure we are creating helpful content for our parents. We will also send a follow-up email with links to this presentation, as well as the feedback form. We will stay on this call until 745 in case you have specific questions. Thank you for another great Rethink Education Parent Webinar.